All right, my name is Matt Dorr, and I will be teaching you the injections portion of the NBEO. Um, some precautions for this. We are using an old drape, uh, just so we don't waste our good ones that are in a sterile package, but the ones you will be using will be in a sterile package. For our IM injection, uh, the needles that we have currently have a syringe and needle both attached on boards. I am not certain if they will have separated or together. Um, you just have to make the adjustment by grabbing an extra needle if they are separate when it comes to boards itself. And as well as for the sodium fluorescein injection, uh, in the video we do use this 3 milliliter syringe. Um, we only were able to find a few of the 5 milliliter syringes. This is the one that you will want to use on boards. Um, but for the sake of the video, we only used the 3 because there was more of them. Um, lastly, we ran out of cotton balls, so rolled up tissues, that's what we got. All right, as you know, this is the IV arm, but we can't really do an IM injection on it. For the sake of demoing it, we are not going to be injecting into the arm. We are just going to do uh, pretend that we stick the needle in and pretend to inject. All right, first thing we want to do is we want to greet the patient. Hello, Mr. Lee. My name is candidate 12345 and I'm here to administer your fluorescein angiography. First thing we want to do after that is wash our hands, making sure we wash for 20 seconds, making sure to get the back of the hands in between, under the fingernails, most importantly, back side of the thumb. A lot of people forget that. After that, we want to make sure to dry our hands thoroughly. No, no left water on there. Now we will prepare our aseptic field, starting with our drape. We're going to make sure our drape is shiny, shiny side down. So make sure it's there. Keep the arm up out of the way. Make sure it's fully onto the field. I like to keep it up towards the back so we have plenty of space to prep. First thing we we'll put on here is our medications. Make sure you get the right ones. 25% sodium fluorescein and 1 to 1,000 epinephrine. Now we want to get our syringes for our sodium fluorescein, a, in this case, 3 milliliter syringe, our needle and our butterfly needle. Make sure everything is fully on the drape as well as our syringe and needle for our epinephrine. Two cotton balls, four alcohol pads, tape, and tourniquet, and gloves. One of the things I like to do right now is to go ahead and prep your tape, just pulling out the edge. When you wear your gloves, it is impossible to get these things started and it'll just help you out in the end. All right, to prep our sodium fluorescein syringe, we're gonna first state the concentration, the name of the medication, and the expiration date, in this case, 25% sodium fluorescein, expiring in February of 2016. Now we're gonna to wanna to clean the top of that using our alcohol prep pad. We will remove the alcohol from the thing, throw it away, and with one single swipe, clean the top of this vial. Now we can prep our syringe. We will get the syringe out of the casing. You can throw it away so not to clutter your aseptic field. Same with the needle. With this type, you just want to twist on firmly. Make sure it's all the way on there. And then now you can aspirate air. We would aspirate more than our three milliliters that we're going to be pulling up. But in the case of the syringe, three is the maximum we can go. Now that we have that, we're going to use Remove the cap, pull far, far apart, not just a little bit. If you do that, that's a good way to get yourself stabbed and lose points. So we'll go ahead and pull firmly apart, setting the cap down in a way that it's not pointing towards the patient or yourself for safety later. Using one-handed technique by putting one hand behind your back, insert the needle into the vial, aspirate all the air back into the vial, and invert. Once inverted, you can start to pull back the medication. The slower you do it, the less air you will get inside of the syringe. But the pace that you want to go at is all up to you. Once you pull back, you're going to want to pull past the 3 millimeter mark, but due to the type of syringe that we are working with, we can only pull up to 3. Once fully there, you can remove from the vial. Next, you want to remove all the air bubbles that are inside. Give it a good flick, a couple of flicks. Make sure to check down by the bottom as well as up by the top to get all the air bubbles up to the top. 
this point you can over the trash not over your aseptic field or the arm set your syringe to the proper amount in this case three milliliters At this point we can do the one-handed scoop technique again to recap the needle once on secure it and then we will state what we have in here so I have three milliliters of 25 percent sodium fluorescein ready for IV injection All right, now we're going to be prepping our epinephrine injection. In this case, we will go ahead and do the same thing as before. We will be stating our name of the drug, concentration, and expiration date. In this case, we have epinephrine, one to 1,000 ratio, expires 12, 2019. Set that down, alcohol prep once again, remove, throw away, single swipe, and dispose. Now you can now you can prep the syringe and needle. In this case, we are using a pre-prepped one. On boards, it may be pre-prepped or they may be separate. If so, prep it the same way as you did with the sodium fluorescein. In this case, we will go ahead and aspirate past. For the IM injection, we are going to be using 0.4 milliliters. So I like to go to 0.5. Same thing, but with these, because they are not a twist on syringe needle, you want to just go ahead and grasp at the base of the needle and fully separate. Set down the cap once again, not pointing towards you or the arm. One-handed technique into this vial and push in the air. Invert, draw past the point four, once again going slowly as to not get excess air within the syringe. All right, once we have it in, we can invert, flip it over, and flick out all the excess air up to the top. And once again, over the trash can, get to our 0.4 milliliters. At this point, we will one-handed scoop technique again, get the cap back on, secure it, and then state for the proctor what we have. So in this case, we have 0.4 milliliters of 25% or of 1 to 1,000 epinephrine ready for IM injection. And we can set that down. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to instruct the patient as to what we are going to be doing. Mr. Lee, we are about to inject some dye into your arm to take a look at the blood flow in the back of your eye. Next thing we want to do is to ask about any allergies. So, Mr. Lee, are you allergic to any of these? Medications, dyes, tape, or latex. Those are the four things that you want to ask about. Now we will discuss side effects with Mr. Lee. Some of the side effects of this procedure are yellowing of the skin, yellowing of the whites of the eyes, and yellow in the urine, as well as nausea. If you do feel unwell at any point in time, please let us know. Uh, one of the major side effects of this is anaphylaxis. Although rare, we are prepared in case this is to occur. Now we would like to inform you to relax and we will get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do for the IV injection is to first palpate the vein using two fingers, not your thumb, to feel for the vein. Once you have found it, we are all set there. Now we will prep the needle. First thing I like to do is to prep the butterfly. Go ahead and remove the package. You can discard it, throw away the protective sleeve and the protective cap on the end. Now you can remove the needle from the syringe. When you remove the needle, make sure it goes directly into the sharps, not crossing over any of your arms or the arm on the board. Untwist and go directly into the sharps. Now you can attach the butterfly, twist on as well, and set aside. Now we will prep the arm by applying a tourniquet. First thing is to pull the tourniquet underneath and then one to two inches above the injection site, pull tight, cross over once, and then tuck the top side underneath, just like that. This gives you a nice tight tourniquet as well as making it easy to pull here to remove the tourniquet. Now we will go ahead and put on our gloves.
and clean the injection site. Using an alcohol swab, you will go ahead and start at the center of the injection site, going in a circular motion outward. Make sure to cover a large area in case you do have to find a new spot. You can dispose of that. Now that the injection site is ready, you can go ahead and prep your needle, remove the cap. The cap is not needed anymore, so you don't necessarily need to save it, so you can go ahead and throw that away. Now, when you go to inject into the arm, you want to make sure that you have bevel side facing up, just like that. You will go ahead and turn the arm over till you can see it. You want to make sure you pull the skin taut and away from the direction that you're going to be injecting. You don't want to put it over here. You want to make sure it's underneath so you don't accidentally stab yourself if you bounce off the arm. You will slowly inject into the arm until you get a little bit of blood flow into the butterfly needle. Which point, if you need to trade, that's fine. Just do not release the arm. You can pull all the way back into the syringe until you get blood just into the syringe, at which point you are good to go. At this point, remove the tourniquet and begin injection. To start, you want to inject just a little bit into the arm, and once that has happened, check the area for extravisation, just feeling with two fingers. I don't feel any lumps or bumps around the area. Now you may begin fully injecting all of your sodium fluorescein. You want to inject at a slow rate, slow but steady rate. Once the air gets close to the end of the butterfly needle, usually about two thirds, you can stop, switch as you need it, make sure to always have one hand always on the needle. Take your cotton, put it over top, pull out the needle, needle goes straight into the sharps box, do not go anywhere else. Take your tape, the one that we have pre-prepped, stick it onto the arm, and tape the cotton ball firmly. At this point you have finished most of it, now you will state what you have just done. So in this case I have injected 3 milliliters of 25% sodium fluorescein into the median antecubital vein of Mr. Lee's left arm. All right, now we're going to be doing the IM injection. First thing we want to do is to let Mr. Lee know what we were doing. Mr. Lee, we're going to be injecting some epinephrine into your arm for the anaphylaxis that you are experiencing. First thing we want to do is palpate the area, make sure there's no tenderness. State that there is no tenderness, there is no tenderness. And now we can prep the site. Once again, alcohol pad in a circular motion starting inside going outward. Once clean, you can throw this away. Now we can go ahead and prep the syringe, in this case, pulling off the cap. Now we will bunch up the skin in the area, inserting the needle 90 degrees. You're going to want to insert quickly into the deltoid. Once inserted, you can begin injecting into the deltoid, but because this is not an IM arm, we will not be injecting. Once done, you can remove the syringe and immediately go into the sharps, remembering not to cross any of your body parts. Now you can use a cotton swab and slowly massage into the area and apply tape as before. Now that you have protected the wound, you can now state what you have done. So in this case, I have injected 0.4 milliliters of 1 to 1,000 epinephrine into the left deltoid of Mr. Lee intermuscularly. Now that we have finished both procedures, we can now dispose of our gloves using proper technique, balling it up into one hand, scooping it underneath with the other, and disposing of the gloves. And now we will once again wash our hands thoroughly, 20 seconds, making sure to get all parts of the fingers, and dry thoroughly. And that is the end of the injections portion.